So if you're interested in something, get involved. Reach out, exactly. uh, talk on Telegram, chat with the founders, ask questions, propose to do some work, wh whatever it is. You can say, hey, I can, uh, if you're an artist, I, you, I can do an artwork and you can post it on your blog. If you're a developer, uh, I, will, I would like to code some, stra some kind of strategies on top of your project. If you are a marketer, hey, I want to create a Twitter account that uh, relays and create content on your, on your projects. Just, just get to it. And that's kind of what I was doing in, uh, all along 2017, mainly helping on uh, uh, yeah, tokenomics, strategy, product, these kinds of stuff. Blockchain, crypto, NFTs, DeFi, Metaverse, Web3 is literally eating the world and community builders are the new leaders. Hi everyone, I'm Bilal El Alami, co-founder of Paris Lab, a startup studio fully dedicated to Web3 startups. In Paris Land, I'll give the mic to Web3 builders, founders and investors so that we can deep dive with them into what is truly about Web3 entrepreneurship. No conventional bullshit, only creativity, rebellion, and community-driven insights. Pierre, uh, hi Hello. Pierre, how are you doing? Hey Bilal, all good, thank you for having me. Great, so Pierre is, like I was saying, a different kind of, um, of builder. He's not building a product, but he's building a service. He's kind of one of the other OGs from the French ecosystem and I uh, really like them because they've been having a lot of impact on, on, on many projects, even, even mine. Um, so I'm very glad to, uh, to, to welcome you today, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to, to be here and discover these amazing offices. And, Thanks. Uh, yeah. You kind of have a glance of the vision impressed. we're trying to, to build here. Exactly. Uh, already your, your website was uh, quite impressive to us. Thanks. Because we have a shit website, <laughs> people want to check it. You, you, you guys are like kind of black barons. We don't hear much yeah. of you, but you are here. Exactly. We are a bit in the, in the backgrounds. Uh, we are, first, one of the reasons is that we're really bad at marketing ourselves. <laughs> like, we don't like to be on the forefront of the scene. And we've been active in the space for a while, but really uh, more in the background. B before we deep dive into what, what is Atia, what, you, what you're doing and, and how you're, 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 you're helping the ecosystem grow, um, tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah. I, I, not kind of the regular um, 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 presentation where you tell us what you've studied. Uh, we don't care much of that. I <laughs> more, more want to know where did you grow up? Um, what are kind of the the first mentors that you had, who are the people that inspired you and who led to the Pierre that is here in front of me? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's interesting questions. And um, I mean, my life is not uh, passionating, right? <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> I grew up uh, in the western suburbs of Paris. Uh, I doubled the grades. I wasn't very good at school, was more focused on music. Uh, we had a group, uh, we would play in some bars and clubs in, uh, in Paris when we were like 16, 17. Nice. Yeah, I was playing the drums and, and bass. And uh, no, after that, uh, I uh, went to uh, Angers, to the west of uh, France, to study engineering. Uh, from there, made a lot of friends, had a lot of fun and learned some stuff. But again, studies wasn't like what I was the best at and so I then went to Hong Kong for a while uh, amazing experiences um, seeing different cultures uh, l learning about uh, people I'm kind of uh, I kind of like like to see uh, the differences uh, between uh, between because in, in in the school we were at in in, the, in uh, Hong Kong it was people from everywhere, and it was the first time I was seeing people from everywhere, everywhere at the same price, at the same place, focused on the same things, like trying to get this this degree that we were working for. And we had people from mainland China, people from the Philippines, people from a lot of Canada, diversity, a lot of diversity. So I learned a lot in that period, and also we traveled a lot because from Hong Kong you can fly to, to wherever pretty easy, so it's quite cool. Then I was a bit in the U.S. for uh, some months. Um, and then came back to France eventually to start a, a company with two of my, my best mates from, uh, from childhood. Uh, nothing super techy nor blockchain related yet. It was a business where we would 
uh, it was in the um, gastronomic tourism, in okay. the food tourism business. And we were organizing uh, food tours in Paris to di di discover an area of Paris through uh, small artisans that have specialties and so on. And okay. we had done this model of food tours that now you, you can uh, go to any city in the world and say, I want to taste the, the food, the specialties of this, uh, of this uh, place. Uh, we had done a different models with with a little passport where you could go and and spend one uh, one token and in exchange for a degustation so and that was uh, 2015 and uh, then i learned about crypto blockchain and kind of did a deep dive and fell down the rabbit hole as they say <laughs> 2016. love this expression <laughs> yeah. i mean that's that's really what it is right i come so i come from an engineering background and i got dragged into the tech side of the thing and I, I learned a lot about blockchain technology before I bought my first token, uh, which was in 2017. And then when you, it's like with NFT, right? You don't get it until you possess one, exactly. until you have one. And you say to yourself, this is representing me. Okay. And for example, as a gamer, you know that your character is you in the game. If you've played uh, World of Warcraft or yeah. stuff like that, I'm a level whatever druid and... Uh, that, that's, that's who I am in the game. With NFTs, you have this kind of, uh, you need to own one to be able to realize the, the potential of it. And with tokens, and join the community and understand the, the value proposition of exactly. having it within, within a specific community. If you don't purchase the, the thing, you cannot really feel uh, what a community actually is, right? Yeah. And with tokens in 2017, it was a bit the same with, uh, with uh, fung uh, fungible tokens. Uh, so the first token I bought, what was it? I think it was Aragon back in uh, 2017. Ah, merci. Okay. All right, right. But uh, we, we've moved a little bit quickly. Yeah, sorry. Tell, tell me more, like, um, through your childhood and, 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 and your student life, mm -hmm. who inspired you? Because from what you said, um, so you clearly have an entrepreneurship mindset. You yeah. started a company in, 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 in non-tech and then you started in another no, uh, industry. I think I see your so, question. I was always drawn to unconventional people. Okay. And uh, for example, if I have to name a French uh, person that inspired me quite a lot, it's Alexandre Astier. Okay, yeah. The, the, the writer of uh, Camelot and many other great uh, pieces. Uh, because he says fuck you to whoever disagrees with him. And uh, he does his stuff the way he wants to do it and tries to bring a lot of people alongside. And that's quite inspiring, I think, to not listen too much to the noise. And when yeah. you have an idea, you should like think about it, if it makes sense. Make your own convictions. Make your own it. convictions and not listen too much. And when people disagree with you and that you still manage to pull it off. And so obviously, you still uh, need to, to stay open. Of, of course. No, no, of course. It's su if feedback is always super important. And that's uh, what... Uh, uh, that's what we like to push a lot uh, with Adka as well, right? Be, be open to, to feedback. Another person that, uh, uh, that uh, I, I was quite, uh, I mean, people that make me think of stuff in a different fashion. It's like uh, a person that made me think differently about uh, comedy uh, is uh, Louis C.K. Uh, so oh, nice. it's, it's, a, it's an American comedian. I, absolutely hilarious okay. or, or someone like Dave Chappelle and these guys uh, yeah they had quite an impact because the way they dissect things uh, I can relate to it because like that's a bit how my brain works as well and so it's uh, it was uh, it's quite interesting so a lot of anti-conformity yeah mindset. a bit and uh, like I didn't like school I would go to it because I also acknowledged that it was why did important. you become an engineer because uh, oh, I'm I'm quite technical. Okay. I like technical stuff. I'm I'm uh, I'm not that much of a marketing person, as I, okay. as I said. I'm not much, that much of a business person. But is there someone I don't who feel great selling stuff, right? Okay. I, I like to understand stuff, dissect them, understand the possibilities. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, engineering school was quite an, an easy an easy way to do it. So it it, it wasn't a great. <coughs> I mean, uh, one of the top engineering school, right? But it was perfectly what I needed to kind of find my own way and realize that, like in engineering school, I didn't. I'm not leveraging any of the pure knowledge I learned from engineering and engineering school, the technical knowledge. But 
engineering school is really good to um, give you the right framework to assess a problem, whether it's technical, whether it's management, whether yeah, it's, uh, you know, so uh, that was, yeah, that was, that's it gives you I, a kind of functional views of, uh, of things that, uh, that yeah, is very important. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Thanks for, for those insights. Let's uh, deep dive a little bit more into what Atka does. But mm -hmm. before of that, I would like to tell you, tell me more about the origin of the project, where, where the, advent, the Web3 adventure started for you after you bought your first token. Yeah. And, um, and uh, please explain us your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey mm. throughout until today. Yeah. And what is that guy doing today? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I got dragged into the crypto rabbit hole in 2016. Uh, quickly, like I would spend my entire free time and nights because I was running the food trip, my first startup. I was also working for a company in Hong Kong and uh, the rest of the time was just on the blockchain and crypto. The real builder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, I had a technical background, but didn't want to get into the developer side of things. So I was more product, strategic, tokenomics, trying to trying to design systems. But uh, I, I, I was not good enough at coding to actually developing the systems myself. So more on an, already on an organizational uh, uh, point of, uh, yeah, uh, I was more on the organizational side of, of building a project. That was 2017. Uh, I had started a few discussions groups at the time to discuss uh, tokens, to discuss opportunities, to, to share stuff. Uh, the same as you may see in uh, like a Reddit or Telegram groups, or, or uh, now it's uh, since a couple of years, it's more Discord, everyone is on Discord sharing ideas, sharing projects. And uh, I then met uh, William and Gabriel at the beginning of 2018. Uh, and uh, William himself, uh, he was the first employee of this exchange, uh, cryptocurrency exchange based out of Hong Kong. It was called Gatecoin. Uh, he scaled the company from zero to 50 employees there in Hong Kong. And then as he came back to France to um, develop and oversee the development of the European operations of Gatecoin. Uh, he recruited one of his mates from uh, HEC, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Robibo, who has himself a, a more traditional finance uh, background uh, in investment banking, uh, and myself, uh, kind of the, the geek of the trio <laughs> that uh, likes to do deep dives in projects. I had a bit of a network because I had interacted all over 2017 with many projects because I would try to get involved and I recommend you, you, you say if you have advice along the along the yeah. interview you just give them so if you're interested in something get involved reach out exactly uh, talk on telegram chat with the founders ask questions propose to do some work where whatever it is you can say hey I can uh, if you're an artist I, you, I can do an artwork and you can post it on your blog if you're a developer, uh, I, will, I would like to code some, stra some kind of strategies on top of your project. If you are a marketer, hey, I want to create a Twitter account that uh, relays and create content on your, on your projects. Just, just get to it. And that's kind of what I was doing in, all along 2017, mainly helping on uh, uh, yeah, tokenomics, strategy, product, these kinds of stuff. And so we got together, William Gabriel and myself, beginning of 2018 to um, supervise the operations of Gatecoin. We did that for one year in France. And then eight, lent, late uh, 2018, you were there already. The landscape the first wasn't, wasn't <laughs> the one, uh, it wasn't the same hype as today. The bear market was really worse than what we're seeing right yeah. now. It was tough. And so we parted ways with Gatecoin. Uh, yeah, well, it, it was a tough time, and and we decided to launch Atka at this point. And uh, I mean, we had a super synergetic relationship, the three of us. We got along super well. Uh, that's also an advice I can give: uh, find founders that you can laugh with every day. That's so valuable, and that you have fun with, and that you're like, uh, you have good synergetic skills with. Yep. So I'm the tech guy. Uh, Gabriel is really structured, he gets things done. Will also is incredibly productive. He does a lot of stuff and he and we all have all knowledge, all bias, but we always manage to get together to a common solution. And 
taking that into account, we said to ourselves, let's, let's not build a product per se. So for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we had just um, uh, part, parted ways with uh, GateCon that was a pure exchange product. So we didn't really want to build a startup from scratch again. Two, uh, it was the middle of the crypto winter, so no one would have trusted us anyway, and we didn't we didn't have the legitimacy that we that we now may have right at the time. And third, we had this idea of yeah, you know what? Let's start by doing something. We will help uh, any project that asks our help on blockchain and, and uh, crypto stuff. And so we started working with a couple of corporate clients and startups on their ideas about uh, um, yeah, anything, their interrogation about how to use a token. Uh, with some of them, we even developed some products. Uh, with you had a lot of experience in like regulatory framework also that you had with Gatecoin. Exactly. Share. So, uh, no, no, exactly. So with Gatecoin, we had built uh, a quite uh, robust uh, setup in Europe with a set of banks, a set of uh, licenses, so on and so forth. So uh, we were quite strong on these fronts as well, right? Uh, help a project get structured, uh, and especially on the things that they don't necessarily expect. Mm -hmm. So all the legal troubles, all the operational troubles, and so on. And, uh, and so we, helped, uh, we, we kind of had this end-to-end -end advisory business where we will connect the project to the relevant people in cybersecurity, in uh, uh, development, we were working with dev offices specialized in, uh, in uh, crypto and blockchain, uh, with legal, with uh, operation and so on. And we were kind of orchestrators and, uh, uh, of, of projects. And that's, that's how we started. That's how we started to work with a, a couple of, uh, as I said, some corporate clients, some crypto trading firms or some startups. And uh, one thing after the other, we kind of yeah, moved forward, had more and more clients. Uh, it was the three of us for quite a long time because we only started to recruit other people mid-2021. For, so for two and, a, two and a half years, it was only the, the three of us. But uh, yeah, we were pulling that off. And uh, along that, alongside that, we also worked on the establishment of the, the fund, so Atel Capital. And so today, ADCA is both this advisory company uh, and an investment fund, a token investment fund. And, and do you do less advisory with corporates or do you still do advisory with corporates? We do it less. We still do uh, some uh, trainings sometimes. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, we always had this bias towards token, crypto, and the pill was hard to swallow for corporates to, yeah, to put definitely. a token in their models. So at some point we were like, okay, what we love is working with startups, working with builders, help bootstrapping projects. And so today we're actually more, so we have the fund. Uh, the fund is a, not a, a big fund, right? But uh, we started uh, beginning of 2020. We launched the fund in, in February. Uh, we are the first investors ourselves. We put what we had left in crypto into our own fund. Uh, and then we raised a bit of money from first and second circles of uh, relationships and uh, business angels and high net worth individuals and so on so we started yeah we started small and we grew uh, by raising a bit of money and then we had uh, interesting performances of course 2020 2021 it was hard to mm. i guess lose money if you if you were smart uh, and i guess we had a bit of experience from before but so we operate the fund uh, we still do a bit of pure advisory but what we're really focusing on right now is uh, early stage incubation of projects. And when I say incubation, it's, uh, it's not going to be, because we're not that good at that, but we don't manage 10 projects in parallel, is we try to get deep down with one project for all the bootstrapping period of the project. And we help on all the aspects that aren't uh, technical or technological, but strategic, operational, tokenomics, fundraising, uh, DAO structuration, community building, so on and so forth. And, uh, so, and we were drawn to that because like, we are still builders. And, and you mentioned it, we're, today we're offering a service, but what we love is just putting our hands down 
in the, yeah, and work in with the, the entrepreneurs, try to hack the, 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 the project. It's, it's kind of the same for, yeah, for, for pirates, for but yeah. we, the advisory that we provide is more focused on technology hmm. first. Exactly. And then in the end, we kind of like work with the entrepreneurs to help them fundraise, but we try to more focus on, 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 on technology. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, can you tell us a couple of companies that you incubated at sure. Atka? Tell us a bit of your track record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, for sure. But uh, you're exactly right. Uh, I would say we are more drawn and more compatible with technical founders mm. that we can help navigate this weird space that the crypto space is. is. <laughs> uh, I mean, you need some codes. You need to know the right people. You need to avoid... It's the classical mistake that all yeah. the project does, that's kind of what we bring. And when we have a team of two, three, uh, two, three founders, one that's kind of a CEO profile, a couple of others that are really technical, that's where we chime the most, right? Um, the first project that we, help, that we helped, uh, beginning of 2021, uh, is called uh, Mangrove. It's a, it's a DEX. Uh, uh, built on the EVM, a new type of DEX with quite a lot of interesting twists. I'm not going to get into the technical details because it would, uh, I guess it would take a, a long time, but basically it's a new type of DEX uh, on which you can build a bunch of strategies that are embedded in the exchange. Okay. It's quite interesting. And so for Mangrove, the, the founders, uh, Adrien, Jean and Vincent, uh, we actually had known for a while We used to work, uh, we had worked on several topics with Vincent since 2018. At the time, we were actually, uh, at the time of Gatecoin, we were actually the first exchange to list Tezos and to have uh, onboarded baking. So you would deposit your thesis on, uh, on Gatecoin and it would automatically stake them. And okay. we had built this with, uh, with Vincent. So nice. we knew Vincent, uh, but uh, when Gatecoin closed down, we were like, we, we, we obviously didn't provide the service anymore, but uh, we kept in touch with Vincent along the years and they came to us beginning of uh, last year and said, we, had this, we have this cool idea about the DEX, uh, what do you think? And we say, hey, we really want to get involved. We're going to help you shape a first fundraising round, do a business plan, do all the things that, I mean, they are, these guys are like top PhDs and, and uh, teachers at CNRS and, and so on. Uh, a resume, but they never so. built a company and uh, all the admin and exactly and so financial work that comes with it. Yeah, exactly. So it was uh, we were in really good synergies. We we got along super well with them from the start, and so we helped on all the administrative, the operational stuff, the even the the fundraising. They had some leads, but we kind of got them to avoid some classical mistake of taking too much money from one person or uh, taking too many people. So, and also we kind of tailored the round of Mangrove specifically um, to the project. And that's what we try to do with all the projects that we have. Uh, Mangrove is a DEX. So we went out and uh, reached out to investors that already had invested in DEX or uh, exchange infrastructure. Well, it is in DeFi or ecosystem, were, yeah. Exactly, or in DeFi, or that were market makers. And so on. And so so we, we did the first fundraising round, and then the, the project was kind of in, in building mode. Uh, we, we are closing now a second fundraising round that we should announce soon. Uh, but yeah, so Mangrove was the first project. We are still really, really involved with Mangrove. Uh, we really have kept uh, with that kind of strong attachment to the project. And m more generally, we're aligned uh, with token incentives with the projects that we, that we work with. So, and that's also uh, like a bias that we have. We love tokens and we think you can put <laughs> tokens smartly in many, many different projects. So the project that we bootstrap, that we accompany, uh, they have token. And the way we, um, we uh, work with them is that we need to be aligned on the long term. So we get a small portion of tokens vested over the same uh, period that is vested members. for the funders. Okay. So vested over three, four years. So Yeah, yeah. T tell us about Morpho as well. Exactly. So Morpho, Morpho, it's really funny because uh, I met Paul, the founder of Morpho, yeah. 
uh, I think it was in April of 2021. And it's Vincent, the founder of Mangrove, that introduced me to, to Paul because Paul was one of Vincent's students at okay. Polytechnic. And uh, Vincent told me, yeah, I have one of my students. He really wants to build the thing that we've been thinking about together. Uh, it's, it's a new protocol to, uh, and the first name of Morpho was called Comp Attack for Compound Attack. Okay. And the second name of Morpho was called Leech, which means draining, uh, you know, so. Liquidity. Draining. So yeah, the idea was to vampirize uh, Ave and, and Compound and, and bring a better product with better yields on top. And uh, Paul, like, I quickly noticed that he was one of these, you know, one in a thousand founders. Okay. And I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know how old he was at the time. And then I realized, damn, he's, he's the pretty, super young. He's super young. <laughs> like th this deal kind of FOMO'd the whole place yeah. in Paris. I had like 10 VCs calling me. Yeah, they yeah, didn't yeah. know the, the name of the company. They, they had some keywords like DeFi, CNRS, Polytechnic. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they're doing the biggest student fundraising uh, since Mark Zuckerberg. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the case, right? But at the time, it was 2021. Uh, we did the first quite small fundraising round with the right partners. Uh, so in the first round, you had people that, and just to give some feedback, that's something we're quite mindful about, right? Getting the right investors. And specifically for Morpho, it, it's public, you can see it on, on their website, but the first uh, anchor investors, co-lead, were Semantic VC, which is also a, a fund that I completely admire, but they are quite in the background and a fund, uh, fund called Nascent. Yeah. And Nascent, one of the founders of Nascent, was really involved in the early design of Compound, of Yam, and okay. just, um, generally... So they understood design. what they were doing. So they understood perfectly. It was a perfect match. And then we had a bunch of follow-on investors that were super helpful. And after a year of... Uh, of uh, not even a year, but something like eight months, Paul went ahead for a second fundraising. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite uh, successful. Uh, and for Morpho, yeah, we same kind as with Mangrove, except that uh, they're a lot more uh, autonomous, they're, they're a lot younger, they're, they're a bit more used to the ecosystem. So uh, let's say um, we help them a lot for the bootstrapping period, but for the second fundraising, they really did it like chiefs and they, f they fly from their own wings now. Nice. So uh, it's quite, it's it's great to see. And now we act a bit as, let's say, advisors, uh, ad long-term advisors. Presumably. Board members, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, so Morpho I really love your qualitative approach of, you know, taking the time, uh, not trying to parallelize a little bit more. Yeah. On our side, we, for Pirates, we intend to accompany like six to eight comp companies per year. Yeah, that's great. Try to have also number. this qualitative approach. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, we're trying to paralyze this a bit more. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how how, no, no, how it ends up. I mean, it's really and I guess on the with the techni more technical advisory that you guys do in technical bootstrapping kind of project, uh, it's a bit. Uh, m I mean, you can afford to have more projects with Adka. Uh, so we started at three. Now we are seven out of this uh, seven people. Uh, two or three of us are fully with Mangrove and, and, uh, and three, four of us are with uh, other projects. Because okay. So in parallel to this incubation model, to uh, what we call it at Calabs, uh, we still do uh, some investments out of the fund. So we don't exclusively invest in the project that we incubate, right? Because we only incubate three, four projects a year. Mm. Uh, with the fund, we still invest in early stage. We don't do that many deals. We try to be a, a bit focused. Because yet again, in this space, uh, as an investor, as an investor, you bring a lot more than money. Uh, yeah. It was the case. you have to bring a lot more than money, otherwise you, you have can't to. Invest. Otherwise, you, you don't have room in the in the qualitative uh, projects in the rounds of the qualitative projects. Um, so you need to be attentive. You need to be involved in many different aspects of the different projects that you back. Uh, governance. You need to discuss the governance proposals if it's kind of a DAO project. Mm. Uh, I mean, we, we can help on tokenomics. Uh, we can help on 
again, even if it's a project we are just investing in, we can help of shaping the, the round of fundraising yeah. a bit, making connection with right investors. With, with that capital, do you do only crypto VC or do you do, you do some active trading on, on a portfolio? So, so Adka has uh, several strategies. Uh, Indeed, we have some. Uh, we, we don't do like market neutral strategies, okay. uh, quantitative tradings. We're, we're not traders. We are directional. We take positions for long term. We hold uh, until we don't hold anymore. But uh, we try to identify a project that we think are. A lot of conviction in, in the investments. Exactly. We, try, we identify a project that we think are underrated. And uh, we take positions in, in them. Either they are already listing, already listed, sorry, and already on the markets. So we have some liquid strategies, and uh, the rest is more uh, early stage, uh, early stage deals. Uh, but we, since a couple of years, we only did let's say uh, 20 early stage deals, uh, yeah, maybe a, a bit less. So we don't do hundreds and hundreds like, uh, and maybe that's also why we are a bit in the in the background, because you don't see our logo that. That often, and a lot of the early stage deals we did over the past two years are already coming live right now, right? So, um, but we're quite content with not being on the on the forefront because already with the we don't have a huge deal flow, but it's already a lot, and we like to spend time to understand the projects that uh, we get in our inboxes. Uh, but man, it's it's a lot of projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of projects. I, specifically nowadays, like yeah. there, there is like we don't say anymore crypto or blockchain. We talk about Web 3 Yeah. There's a whole generation of people just knocking at our doors and yeah. at your doors and 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 most of the nice Web Web 3 project. And so there is kind of uh, an awakening in yeah. in the space. Uh, sure. It's very exciting, and it's also part of why I wanted you here because. You know, we're trying to um, connect the people so that the ecosystem grows in, 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 a, in a very virtuous uh, circle. Um, what did you find hard um, as a co-founder of Adka during those four or five years? What was, what was hard as an entrepreneur, as, as, as the company? Was it like finding the right service to stick to it? Yeah. I mean, we knew what we were good at. So I would say... Um, and, and you kind of adjust as you're, as you're going. Uh, when we tried to provide services that we ended up thinking, okay, it, we can do it, but it's not what we love the most, we just stopped doing it. What, we, what I found hard is that, I mean, even with the convictions that we have of being early ad adopters of this uh, technology and having the long-term conviction and the, the long-term certitude of this thing, crypto, is going somewhere, Web3 is going somewhere, <clears throat> it's not here to disappear. Even with that in mind, you always have these moments of doubt. So market crashes, we don't care about them, but it's kind of like it affects you, right? So what happened last week with Luna, uh, I was counting, I witnessed maybe eight or more events, like crypto is dead since 2017. <laughs> That was the when well, every year used. there's the same, of course, and some are more damaging than others. But like in 2017, we went to 20 and then to six and then to three. And when it when the dropped from 6,000 to 3.5 thousand happened, oh. like not a lot of people were left in the in the space. And then you, you stick together, right? You stick with the people that are still here, still building. Um, a couple of years, there was this pretty bad crash in the equity market as well that also uh, drove like like destroyed half of the value of crypto uh, in one day actually it's like every every yeah, year every there's year, the, like there's two years ago it was facebook losing exactly. like 20 20% exactly um, that the whole crypto in, market in, 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 last year it was elon musk and uh, and china banning crypto exactly. for the x time and and and, and, and now it's uh, now it was like also in financial market like yeah. netflix there Um, and, yeah, the economic landscape is is is, is not that favorable uh, but like I for, think, for everyone. Yeah, but to your question, this is hard no matter what like exactly. market you or take, industry right? you're, you're in. What, no matter what industry, everything is a cycle. When you, when it's up, everyone is uh, euphoric. When yeah. it's down, everyone wants to leave and do something else. I think our strength is that we are convinced by the long term by the long-term potential of this technology. We're good at it. 
uh, we understand the codes, we understand the technology, uh, we have now a pretty solid network of, of people we can rely on and, uh, and uh, work with. So, um, but yeah, but it was hard at the beginning uh, when we launched and it was the middle of the bear market 2018 to <laughs> find the that. first few clients. <laughs> yeah. And we are really thankful to some of, some of our uh, early clients to have trusted us to, to help them. Uh, I'm going to name uh, Laurent Benichou. Yeah, well, was, uh, you, you know him. He was a, one of the early ones, and uh, they really uh, believed in in us, and uh, and we we did our best to provide the best services and the best advisory we could. And then from here to then, we had more and more clients. But what what ad, what advice would you give to anyone who wants to jump in Web three? Because the the yeah. learning curve is quite steep. It is very hard. I never saw someone like getting fully on board in less than three months. Yeah. Um, w what are the resources you would recommend? It's funny that you mentioned that. I'm not here to shill on all my project, but uh, uh, it has been a recurring theme with ADCA that we like to provide knowledge. Mm -hmm. We like to give out knowledge. So we would organize meetups where we would explain DEXs in 2018. We did a meetup on Web3 in 2019. Uh, in 2020, we published an online course that anyone can ask us and we'll give it up. We'll give a, a coupon for free about the crypto markets. That is quite nice. You're supposed to be able to go through it in, in three hours and then have work to do for the next three months, as you said. Um, uh, and I think Educating people to Web3 is complicated because it's such a shift in paradigm. You have to think about interactions. You have to think about uh, so many different elements uh, in, a, in, a, in a different fashion. Then uh, and yeah, you need to learn. If you're technical and you're a developer, you need to learn about finance a bit to understand if what you're coding makes sense or not. If you're a finance guy, you, earn, you need to learn about, uh, I mean, about to talk tokens and all of that. If you're just a sales, it's a different way, it's different targets, it's a different way to sell a product. I mean, everything is different. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're currently uh, working with a, a quite cool project. It's, it's really early stage, but uh, um, it's called Third Academy. And uh, the goal of this is to provide uh, right courses, right tracks for Web2 uh, profiles to get onboarded to Web3 in an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. You mentioned three months. Honestly, it's, it's hard to do it in less than that. Um, but so my advice would be uh, you need to be passionate about it. You need to believe in the long term. Uh, you need to understand and believe the long term potential of the technology because without agreeing with the long-term vision of decentralization, of uh, um, self-sovereign self self yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. self identity. To of, understand uh, those concepts and, and how, we, how, how the technology is bringing that to the people. Yeah. And, 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 and true, like, be curious and, and yeah, go meet some, some people exactly. and, and interact. So if you want to get in, go to meetups, uh, read a lot. Don't listen too much to the uh, to, to all the YouTube videos uh, that only care about technical analysis and so on. Just uh, if you want to be a trader, uh, I'm fine. I'm I'm just not a trader myself, so I don't understand technical analysis <laughs> that much. But uh, if you want Me to neither. build stuff, <laughs> yeah, if you want to build stuff, just meet people, go to meetups, come to Pirates Labs meetups, uh, um, learn about the the goal. Of crypto, why is it here? Like, try to go back to the early days. Uh, try to learn about the fork of Ethereum in 2015. That's a, you know, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah, things yeah. that you would think of doing right now. That's the case, yeah. But uh, why was there a fork in 2015? Try to learn about the early days, about this mentality of decentralization and so on. Why, why is it important? I think that's important um, because. Without understanding this, uh, what's the goal of all this Web3, uh, this new Web3 economy, you won't manage to be passionate yeah, about what, what really is, is, 
as driving the different projects. Like, the yeah, there is a there is a need for a little bit of cu curiousness to, mm. to 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 get into the rabbit hole. Mm. Exactly, and, and and then you have a whole new world that that opens uh, to to you. Is there any um, I don't know influencers, um, authors, um, newsletter that you would recommend that you find very very qualitative? Um, yeah, I mean crypto Twitter. Yeah. It's just a general concept, but uh, you may follow a lot of people on Crypto Twitter. The ones that speak the loudest aren't usually the ones True. that uh, have the most uh, uh, insights. Uh, but uh, I know I like, for example, the articles of, uh, of uh, one of the uh, partners of a fund called Placeholder, and his name is Chris Berniski. He puts a lot of... Uh, uh, resources and, and placeholder has been putting a lot of great resources as well. Uh, some more on like thesis, some more technical. Uh, you can read, um, there's a lot of newsletter as well. This is more to just be aware of what's happening on the market. Mm. You have Defiant who does a, a great newsletter. Everything is in English though. So, uh, what is the audience of this uh, podcast? English, it's international. Okay, perfect. <laughs> just like Web3. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you learn English, that's important. <laughs> I know, but so Defiant is a, is a great one as well. I might think of yeah, Bank, Bankless is yeah, doing some stuff. I love uh, Bankless, some, yeah. Super good uh, podcast as well. Uh, when I started in 2017, I don't have that much time anymore Ooh, okay. uh, to, <laughs> to uh, do it, but uh, I would listen a lot to the Epicenter podcast. Oh, uh, yeah, I used really, to love really this one. Good. Yeah, it's really one of the first person. podcasts in Web3. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, listen to some listening. podcasts. Laura, Laura Chin also makes a, a super cool uh, podcast as well. Laura I don't Chin. know her, Laura Chin. It's, it's quite good. Uh, the, she uh, interviews uh, like the best, uh, okay. the best founders as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of resources in podcasts, in newsletters, and then just hustle through the weeds of crypto Twitter, uh, of uh, Telegram groups, of Discord servers, and that's where you get the real information. And, and uh, other than just reading information, the important stuff when you want to get in this space is like interact with people. Yeah. Ask, ask questions. Like there's an interaction with people and it's fun. Last week, uh, Jérôme was also, was also incitating people to just try. Yeah. Like, oh, 100%. Buy uh, like yeah. 20 euros of, of Bitcoin or ETH yeah. or whatever and, and, or, or Tezos and, and go plug on yourself on some dApps and, and, exactly. and just experiment with it. I mean, it relates to what we were saying at the beginning. You, don't, you won't understand NFTs Unless you own one. You possess, you possess exactly. an NFT and to possess an NFT, you need to have a wallet and to have a wallet and to buy this NFT, you need to have uh, built an exchange, uh, an account on an exchange and send some Ether on some, or some Bitcoin or some whatever base layer you want to choose on your own wallet that, that you own with your 12 words, then you need to wrap your head around, okay, what do I do with this uh, seed phrase? What is a seed phrase? Do I just write it down on my table? Do I put it on my phone? Do I take a picture? <laughs> Uh, if I take a picture and my uh, cloud is hacked, someone will have access to my uh, to my words and, and uh, I'm done. So you need to think a lot. Just doing it, and I 100% agree with Jérôme, doing it is what makes you realize what all of this is about as well, right? Creating a wallet, saving a seed phrase, uh, buying your first crypto, buying your first uh, and, NFT and, or token. And today the, the user experience is, is, is mostly improved with on-ramps, exactly. um, the, 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 the platforms like DEXs or NFT marketplaces are yeah. quite easy to use now um, with, with a lot of information. Um, I would say though, uh, so today we use our phones we don't really care what HTTP protocol is. Mm. We don't really care how we receive the, the waves to, to have uh, Wi-Fi and to be able to watch YouTube in the train, right? We just have an iPhone. Mm. For crypto, we're starting to get to um, UX, as you mentioned, that might be usable by a mass market with on-ramps, with exchanges like... Um, uh, wallets that are apps on yeah, your phone. Wallets that are apps. I'm so disappointed when, for example, people, they say, um, 
Yeah, Bored Ape is is, is just a picture mm. who's worth 500,000 euros. Yeah, yeah. Like, Jude, if you would have Googled Bored Ape, the first sentence would tell you that you own the IP of the yeah. ape and you can do whatever you want with it. Exactly. And it's super, super strong. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and now you understand that it's not just a picture. It's a picture that embeds licenses, a license that you can monetize, just like some brands used to do. Uh, for Hello, for example, Hello Kitty, they, they monetize licensing for, for and it's it's part of their of their menu in games as well. They they license um, the the IP of of of, of the games. Um, well, we've talked a lot, uh, yeah. Pierre. Uh, I'm gonna ask like one last question about your 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 founder's personality, okay. and then we we will 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 conclude um, with a couple of funny questions. Um, what do you have? Some rituals you share? You can share. Some daily routines. Um, daily routines. Uh, like your I, I don't play know, for example, one day. game of chess with my friend Bertrand after lunch. Okay. Yeah, we do the five five. You know when you yeah five uh, five minutes five minutes. That's one of the routines because you need to take your mind. It's so intense that you need to take your mind yeah. off. A healthy work routine. Try not to work too much, even if. Saying that to early stage founders is, is always, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, uh, try to do stuff without your phone because yeah. like it makes you think about stuff without the, the noise. Uh, I surf and when you surf, you don't have your phone and I while it's, surfing, it's like shower thoughts. I do free diving and it's yeah. the argument I give. When yeah, I'm exactly. in the water, mm. you don't have your phone yeah. and you... You think of something else. Yeah, it's like sh shower thoughts. Shower thoughts are really powerful because you can't check the time, you can't check your phone, you can't validate. You just think of something and say, is this true? Is that like, and you try to, so do activities that don't involve your phones and stuff so you can reflect on the ideas that you had during the day. I, I try to do that quite a lot. Cool. Mm. Um, yeah, me too. Very important mm. to have uh, qualitative times. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and different times like when you work and when you have pleasure should be really disconnected to, uh, to, to, to your work I'm not able yet to do that a lot yeah. I usually like mix you know um, work and, 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 and fun when I can yeah, um, but yeah, yeah I mean the, it should be fun right what we're doing is yeah. really fun yeah, true, I, true, true, I, true, I true. only go to work early and leave late because I'm having a great time and when the this days are hard, I remember that, yeah. But I mean, in the weekend, I have like my moment yeah, where for I sure. totally uh, disconnect, mm. usually on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So the, the next phase of the interview is, uh, is like um, small fun, well, small questions. Let's, let's start with the, with the breaking news question. Um, you're, you're very good in DeFi. What is your take on what happened to Luna? Um... I mean, there was uh, um, insights, right? Last year in May, it already decoupled yeah. UST. So when something like this happens, pay attention. And uh, we paid attention and we didn't touch Luna okay. uh, since we saw that it decoupled. and that It, it decoupled, you, know, you mean the peg? Uh, UST and uh, yeah. USD. Yeah. Like the peg had already decoupled last okay. year. People need to remember that. There were signs that all this would go to shit. And the more um, social aspects of Luna, of the eccentric is the least I could say, uh, eccentric um, uh, personality of the founders. Yeah. Like, these are signs that you need to watch out for something, that something is not good. So really? I'm really devastated. Uh, and I, I really touched me that a lot of people got caught with this. But it had happened for the past thousands of years yeah. of people following uh, charismatic, and uh, I, I don't find him, I find him that charismatic, but charismatic leaders that make whatever they want of their followers, right? Yeah. I think it's... Um, I mean, it was a it was a nice promise. It was a nice uh, vision, but the 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 technical impossibility of a, a long term and and at scale sustainability of their system were acknowledged and were called out by so many people that uh, again you need to go deeper. 
if you yeah. want to understand and not make don't just mistake. follow the yield like, don't just follow the yield understand the team yeah. which is the first criteria when you exactly. do uh, an investment and um, and yeah try to understand the quantitative part and the literature review that has been done on it exactly and uh, like listen to so everyone is going to be criticizing what you do some voices are more relevant than others and everyone is going to be criticizing everything but there were a lot of really smart voices that raised concerns uh, towards the 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 technical uh, aspect the the, the economic Uh, aspect of Luna that couldn't work at scale. Do you believe in 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 those uh, rumors saying Gemini and no. Citadel have no, been no. doing some market? It's like there is no evidence. There is evidence. There will be evidence that will come out that will be raised on chain eventually, right? But I don't. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's. A, why would an institution come crashing one project, right, mm. at the worst time of global market? Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, the incentives are not there. What but, are your uh, thoughts on algorithmic stablecoins? Oh no, some are well designed. I mean, Maker has held, and Dai, uh, they have held pretty pretty well. Mm. Uh, it's always. Like the difference between algorithmic and fully backed stable coins, I think the two will need to cohabit and coexist in this ecosystem. Um, it's different value proposal, and also it goes back to the question of decentralization. Not everything needs to be fully decentralized. Decentralization is a spectrum, and that's also a good question to the founders. Sure. Where do you want to be on that spectrum? You can have an amazing product that speaks to a lot of people and have amazing product market fit and be fully centralized, and it's fine. You can be an enabler to let people discover the ecosystem at yeah. large and Web3 at large. I'm, I'm okay with this. You can also be a fully decentralized, started by an anon uh, anonymous founder and taken over by the community, a DeFi protocol, uh, if you want. But uh, there's also a path to progressive decentralization, right? I sure. think it's... a uh, You have USDC, who is fully backed, fully audited. They publish the, the audit every quarter. And like they circle on Goldman Sachs. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, then you have uh, Maker and, and other uh, algorithmic stablecoin like Frax and so on. They're all super interesting. And at least they're really interesting uh, um, experiments. But uh, when the experiments manage to be as large as 50 million like Luna, and that uh, you have everything that's around the project and so many projects built on top of Luna, it's quite painful. Yeah. And honestly, even if uh, like I may not have been exposed personally to Luna, it's, I mean, I feel that it's bad for the ecosystem because a lot of people get hurt. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's uh, it's not great. Earlier, you mentioned something that was very interesting. You said when you were talking about Paul, the founder of, mm. of uh, Morpho, you said... Um, He's a one in a in a thousand person. One What? in a thousand builder. One, one in a thousand builder. You have the same with the CEOs. You have the same with devs. You have the same with managers. And and as a yeah, what um, can you quote like three qualities or thing that makes you think that he is one in a thousand? Focus. Okay. He never loses his focus. He always know exactly where he wants to go and what he needs to achieve okay. to to reach uh, the goal. Uh, he's also really attentive to feedback from anyone. That's a huge quality. And I think I mentioned to the beginning, sometimes you have an idea, you should get into it and try to build it. But when relevant people give you feedback, so people that understand this business, And I'm not talking about just Adka, but along his journey, he met a lot of different people that gave him advice on many different aspects of the project. Uh, operations, uh, fundraising, how to structure your fundraising round, technology and so on. Be attentive to feedback. That's a, that's the second one. And then, uh, yeah, have fun. Right. Uh, and Paul has fun. Like uh, when, when we're at the office, we, we, we laugh uh, all the time. So um, Cool. But uh, yeah. Stay focused on where you want to go, be attentive to feedback, and, and overall you need to have fun, otherwise it's not, not worth it.
Thanks, thanks, thanks. Mm. So that's uh, wonderful words to, to, to close the, the session. Um, thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, Pierre, for uh, coming over. Of course. Um, if you want to join the community, check out our Discord. We have some amazing people there who are uh, in the community mm. and, and supporting each other. Our, our wonderful head of growth, Alexan, put in place uh, a grading system. So the more you help the people, yeah, cool. you, the, the, the more your, your score goes up and the more you can access some, some really good content on, on Web3. Um, it's a safe, safe space for founders and, and builders and investors and, and creators to, to gather. Um, and I want to gather there too. And sometimes I go chill the, the, the Discord. Um, the podcast is a production by Paris Lab, so thanks everyone for listening. Uh, we'll catch up in the next session. Bye.